All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here of the Pigeonhole Motorcycle Podcast. I am here with Giles and Andy, um, and we're talking with Sabotage. How are you guys doing today? Really good, really good. Thanks for having us. Yeah, I'm Great. pretty pretty stoked to be on. Hey, thank show. you. And I see you guys are you guys are already having a beer this afternoon? <laughs> yeah, it's, pretty, it's it's actually pretty hot here at the moment. Like, yeah. Um, I think um, after twelve o'clock, you're allowed to open a beer. I think that's I think that's the rule. And it's, are you, you guys you're are drinking what? Oh, vodka, vodka tonight. <laughs> yes, I've I've been in, I've been inspired today. <laughs> you motor, you is motor that, is that ice from your doorstep. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> funny, <Right>? funny. <laughs> Actually, it was like fifty here today. Wow. Yeah. So you guys are in Australia, correct? Correct. Yeah. So How we're based in uh, we're, we're 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 in Sydney. Okay. Uh, in the or well, to be precise, the inner west. Um, as they say, inner west is best. Is where uh, is where all the hipsters are. But you know, that's uh, don't hold that us uh, don't hold that against us. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> it's almost a kingdom here. <laughs> <laughs> how how is everybody holding up there with the fires and everything? Is how's the mood over there? Yeah. Um. It's uh. It's pretty bad. Um, I've just come back from a, from a road trip up north and driving through, uh, plenty of forest that's been, that's been burnt. It's all just charred. Um, I think, I think where I was, it happened a little while ago. So some of the green is actually starting to come back, um, already it kind of, you know, those new shoots start, start coming through quite quickly. Um, and actually a lot of the, a lot of the Australian, um, bush needs fire to actually regenerate that's how some of the plants spread their seeds but you know this season is just on another level um i, I think it's the size of it is really what's mind-boggling mm. like when you you know you probably heard about the fires in the amazon you know we we got um you know there was um five times the size of the of the amazon fires what we have here so um when you think about that in terms of the scale, so it's pretty devastating for um, you know, for um, for the people, um, in, especially around our area because it's not far from us really. But mm. two three hours and it starts already with the fire affected areas. Yeah, I saw a. Um, I was searching through uh, Google yesterday and I saw a shot from space that showed um, how much is actually on fire and you, you can't really comprehend it until you, you you look at a photo like that and it was like holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you know the smoke actually all, all gone over to New Zealand. So you know, from Sydney to um, Auckland is what three and a half hour flight. Yeah. So that's like when you think about it. So the smoke from the bushfires have affected them over in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you if you, if you fly three hours from Chicago somewhere, um, you know, still fire, still <laughs> or yeah. still smoke, smoke from yeah. the fire. You know. So that's unbelievable. That's all the way across the country for most part here. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So tell me about sabotage. Let's let's, let's we're going to go to good things. Yeah, All right, let's yeah. go. <laughs> that's good. I know. Don't, don't. I have a I have a good Aussie friend that's uh, been very down about all this. So we're we're going to lift everybody up and talk about some good things happening over there. Uh, are we actually the first? Um, I mean, not not that I'm an Aussie, but I'm you know I've been long enough here to call myself an Aussie. But are we the first Aussies on your show? Um, okay. Do you can do you consider uh, Andrew Jones an Aussie? Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so you're beat. The other, the other guy's really not an Aussie. The other guy that that we talk uh, yeah. about, some Rod yeah, yeah, Smythe. Well, we, well, we aren't either. <laughs> really, <laughs> well, might, like, you might have you might have already noticed. Uh, you know, we're, uh, we're 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 Aussies, but I'm originally from England, and Andy's originally from Germany. So uh, we're kind of imposters on that level, anyway. So, so how do you how do you both end up in Australia working together? Um. So I, I basically came to Australia about 20, 22 years ago by, um, I'm the souvenir of my wife, basically. She, um, she packed me into her luggage and I, you know, I, um, I never left really because it's, it's, um, it's pretty cool here. Um, um, I guess, you know, you, you, you get your roots out wherever you feel comfortable, I think. And, um, you know, I, I kind of like felt comfortable here. Um, I don't know, Ch Charles, um, you, you. Yeah, well, I'm, 
I'm the, I'm the same. I'm, I'm the trophy husband as well. Right. You know, the, and let <laughs> me, let, of, let me tell you by looking at these guys, the, you talk about trophies. These guys are the two top <laughs> trophies I've seen. Trophy. Uh, yeah. First place, second yeah. place, third place. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So kind of the same. Um, my, you know, met my, met my wife in London and, uh, you know, Australia is a pretty nice place to, to, to go to. So why not? Right. So how do you guys both go to Australia and then how do you guys hook up? So, um, it's quite a, it's quite a funny story. Um, so, uh, I guess when you, when you start having an interest in, in building stuff, um, so let's talk about motorcycles. Um, I, th I think your first port of call is always going to be a shop called Bunnings, which is probably your equivalent of, I don't know, Home Depot or something like that. It's a, it's a, it's a hardware store. Okay. Um, and uh, I, I was there picking up tools and parts that I needed, and uh, and I saw this guy on a on a on a on a really schmick uh, original condition CB450, and I thought, ah, got to go and chat to this guy because I at the time I was building a CB360, so I wandered over and uh, there was this this slightly kooky. German guy and uh you know we, we we started talking and uh and 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 kind of left it at that and then um fast forward what I don't know well, another year another year probably and uh and we bumped into each other again at the throttle roll um motorcycle show so it's just like a custom motorbike show yeah cust custom motorcycle street party show um hosted by Mark Hawa. And, yeah, I've heard uh, of that guy. He's, a, he's okay. You've heard of him? Yeah, he's all right. You know, he's a dodgy fucker, but, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he big, a, he's a big teddy bear, really. He, he got he his, really his the beard as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He, hides, he hides stuff in there, I think. Exactly, he's yeah. He's disguised. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. But, yeah, so he puts this show on, um, or, you know, he... Um, it was probably um, 2016. He put this show on, or he, he, I mean, I think it was on from 9, 2015, as when I got inspired about custom motorcycles because he puts this scaffolding up on. You know, it was a pub at the time. It was not very big. He puts the scaffolding up, and there's like um, you know three layers of bikes on this platform, and um, displayed. You know, 20, 30 bikes with the lights coming on at night and bands playing and you get drunk under these custom motorcycles and that's kind of like when i first got expired to so oh you know um these guys all building these bikes you know like and so yeah and then then i met trials um you know by accident but it had nothing to do with custom bikes at that stage really so mm. it was more like a mutual honda love i guess yeah um and um not only later on where um i think the following year um I was building a bike specific for the throttle roll um, with, you know, bleeding my fork, my old forks out of this little tiny bike that, you know, like a, I think in America it's called, a, um, you know, I don't know, it's a little bit bigger than a monkey bike. It's, a, it's like a, um, a CT70. It's one of those um, trails or something they're called, Honda Trail. And um, I was bleeding the forks um, on my kitchen table, you know, um, 20 30 40 year old fork going on to my dining table um, <laughs> when i basically got kicked out from home by you know I, I wasn't really allowed to do this at home and that's when you know when things progress to you know yeah build build, build stuff <clears throat> basically yeah i mean i think we we kind of we kind of met at that time where we were both exploring the same thing independently but very much on the same wavelength and it was very much about because what the the idea that we 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 really like is this kind of renaissance of of um, these vintage bikes. I mean, you know, we we do have a tendency to favour Hondas, but it's it's anything vintage really. Um, you know, so many of these bikes end up as unfinished projects or rusty heaps of shit that you know there's we we think there's plenty of life in them. Yeah. And what we do is we just you know use a lot of elbow grease and actually and actually you know um get these bikes back up and running again um i mean it's, um, it's not like that they're lying like it's not like we have access to a lot of them it's 
No, there aren't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, and and I think I think here in Australia, you know, the, there's there's definitely a bug here now for for people wanting um, these old older machines. So the 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 value has gone up with them. Um, so they are a little bit harder to find, and people think that they're worth more than they actually are, and they don't realise that you know um the amount of work and spare parts that you've got to put in to to get them back up and going again and and again because we're in australia we get we get shafted by the shipping i mean we've we've you know we've spent many years laughing oh, about is, is how it, we it, get how we get raped by you know freight shipping charges because freight charges, everything comes from europe or america and, yeah, right. uh, and i suppose that that then led us on to sort of go right fuck this we've got to make more of our own parts um right. Yeah, we're kind of fast tracking a little bit on our on, yeah. on sort of where we're at, no, but um, that's okay. but I think just just sort of going back to, you know, we had that, uh, yeah. So we we sort of met and, and yeah, we were on this same thing. You know, um, we we both had these same stories where we're re rebuilding engines on our kitchen kitchen bench, and uh, you know, both our wives kind of going, "What? <laughs> what are you doing?" <laughs> uh, and you know and and um uh and we both see i think it's quite quite uh amazing with us is we both have exactly the same vision on what we like from a design perspective or bike, um or bikes, or bikes what we like what we don't like even overall but also from like small small details as well um i think we're quite lucky to have sort of to have that synergy um the other thing that works really well is is we kind of we you know us coming together has has allowed us to kind of pool our skills um so andy's background is is um electrician um mine is 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 more the sort of i guess maybe the mechanics and the sort of the metal fabrication and we kind of throw it all together and we kind of divide and conquer i guess if you think about you know I mean, the, the, the skills that you know the total skills that you need to to fill, fabricate and build a bike, we kind of, you know, we kind of split them up and then, um, you know. I mean, I, I came to the realization that um, I can't do this by myself, isolated in a garage, just, you know, like I'm um, sanding and polishing um, piece, pieces away and trying to keep focus of, you know, the end game. And there's a lot of people out there that basically, you know, they have this great ambitions and they go for it and they, you know, they do the 90% and then the last of the 10% is where they need some encouragement from someone else. They, they basically, they just, or they stop it or they get disheartened. And we basically, we have now, there's two of us. So if one person is in that mindset that they are frustrated or whatever, um, he can just go home. The other person takes over. The other person says, look, chill out. This is not a big mistake. Let's do it again. Let's try something else out. So we, we got like two minds here by not getting, um, you know, um, get off track very easily by, um, by um, throwing the towel in because you're alone or you, you by yourself. And, you know, when you look at people that um, do this stuff by themselves, I mean, I, I kind of admire people um, you know, like like Craig, who you know for years and years and years is 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 by himself in his garage, freezing his nuts off, and you know, <laughs> and doing this sure. stuff. And there's no there's no one around really who understands what he's trying to do or what he wants to do or is even listening to this whole thing. I mean, you know. So and um, so that's when 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 I said to Charles, look, let's just put our two heads together and start building bikes together a we can hang out together and drink beers and b we can substitute our skills because mm. um you don't have skills just on one scale you right just, and it sounds like the uh, a partnership thing here it's nice that you guys are lifting each other else uh, lifting each other up and i and i'm sure that you guys have disagreements but at the same time it's it's unlikely to see such a great partnership of helping each other out yeah, well, exactly. I mean, that that's that's the thing. It's uh, like I I I kind of keep looking at it and sort of think, wow, you know, it's like, you know, we're we're, we're planning our uh, so this one behind. Well, the listeners can't see this, but yeah, one beautiful behind, bike. This should this should go out in the next couple of weeks, and we're already planning 
um, our next build, which is for a competition in May. So, you know, we're kind of time and time is running out, but as soon as we start kind of getting the bike on the bench and start throwing ideas, you know, we can, we, we know what the other person's thinking, you know, we're on board with it. It's not like, what are you thinking? What, that's nothing to do with what we want to, you know, it's, it's straight away. It's like, yeah, yeah. And then we can do this and then we can do that. And, and um, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a really, real, really good, uh, really good synergy. I think we push each other as well. I think, yeah. I think we also go like someone has an idea and, you know, like Charles has an idea. And the first thing I go is like, you know, this is too complicated. We, 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 we can't <laughs> do this. We haven't got the skills or, you know, but hey, that's cool. Let's let's just go and find out how we're gonna get this done. You know what I mean? Like, what what does it mean to actually do this? Um, I think I think every good idea starts with we can't do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you know, you're going the right from, direction. <laughs> yeah, from the other person, or other person always says, "No, no, we, that's that's too complicated." No, why? See, think simple, and then the other person is okay. And works it out, and so we're working out a lot of shit by just basically talking about it. Um, um, well, just to go back, um, you know, um, sabotage motorcycles basically was um, um, we we basically needed an Instagram name. Um, we needed a um, we needed basically a you know an identity for. We had this idea, um, you know, um, one of our first things when we just hung out in the in the in the workshop was. Um, at Charles's garage at the time, it was a little underground, um, you know, apartment block, and we were sort of perched in this little tiny place. We were listening to music, and we were talking about music, and we were talking about art, and we we're talking about motorcycles. And in this whole scenario, came out that we have very similar views on um, design and art and motorcycles, and combining this all um, led us to basically our first venture, which was. Um, um, an exhibition, an art exhibition with helmets. So hmm. we basically went out and we had this idea. I mean, we probably saw it somewhere on the internet or we had some kind of idea about um, collaborations with other people, but we basically pro proceeded this, this thing um, with this exhibition, which was, um, you know, 20 helmets and 20 artists. Um, however, we needed to promote this and we didn't really have an identity, so we needed to create something. And that's basically what Sabotage Motorcycle came out of. And at the same time was the machine show, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so it coincided with, um, so the machine show, which is a, uh, which is an excellent um, motorcycle show uh, in rural New South Wales, down in Braidwood. It's uh, put on by a guy called Matt Darwin, um, also known as Matt Machine. Um, who starts the machine files uh, who's also a great uh, great motorcycle builder um, and a good friend of ours and all-around great bloke um, and the second so it was the second year of the machine show he decided to put on a build competition and um, you know it kind of kind of the rules were very strict very, very strict rules which which we really liked um <laughs> andy being german <laughs> likes to uh you know stick to rules and do things by the book um so he liked that and um uh and and you know it was it was it was all it was all kind of timing uh and you know with andy came to me and he was like oh matt's doing a build comp for the machine show let's do it and let's do a bike together I was like, "Fuck yeah! All right, awesome!" And and it kind of went from there. And then the but part of the rule, part of the rules, were to you had to you had to, you have to post your progress, and every two uh, weeks you had every, to have an update of what you're doing. Yeah, and of course, again, we didn't have we didn't have anything to go by. Um, <laughs> right. and so and we had the helmet show to finish, so and we had the and we had the helmet show, and so it kind of you know it kind of spawned from there, and we wanted to look back at. Um, cause another thing that even though we grow up, grew up in different countries, um, we have same taste in, in music and, uh, popular culture and things like that. And, uh, yeah, over, over multiple beers, we, um, you know, we saw that we saw their first fight. Yeah. Right. So where did the name sabotage come Where you guys listen to beastie boys or something? <laughs> did you really <laughs> yes straight on the yeah. straight on the net yeah. i i think it's a i think I it's also it. a, you know i think if someone comes up with this idea straight away that this is the beastie boys um 
I think we hit it on the nail. Basically, we are two white guys in a, um, you know, in a different, coming out of a different culture, um, falling into this building custom bikes um, by pure love of what we're trying to do. So we don't, we don't have any background in, you know, I, I, I mean, you know, I, I know how to drill a hole into a piece of metal from my experience in my trade from being an electrician. Um, the hole doesn't need to be 8.2 mils big or 8.5 mil or whatever. It just needs to be a hole. Um, so from that background, we're like the guys and similar like the Beastie Boys, they came onto the scene, white guys doing rap music and everyone going, whoa, what are you guys doing? And right. I, I guess we identify ourselves with exactly the same thing as like we're coming onto this we're coming onto this you know scene if 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 we want to put ourselves into it as the guys that you know I, I i will go out and learn something for a whole year or for a year and a half on a skill that i might need for the next bike to build like you know i i i bought a sewing machine, I found another sewing machine, I fixed the four sewing machine just to do leather seats one day. And you know, mm. I can't do any leather seats now. So let's use denim. So we use denim seats, you know, like mm. this is one of those things that's awesome. We're trying to do. And, and the cross reference there to the Beastie Boys and the word sabotage is basically what it is. We're trying to sabotage the whole thing. Yeah. But we we try to sort of pull that element through as well. And you know, we try to kind of it's i'd say not follow a trend but it's very hard to produce a custom bike that you know isn't following some sort of trend that's gone before but i think our design process and the way we think about things uh, you know it comes it ends up being quite subtle but there's you know there's a story behind why we've made certain decisions on things and you know the the, the build that we finished last year was a um it was a 1926 douglas frame hey. I was going to ask you about the 26 Douglas because that thing is amazing. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that, that kind of, you know, sums up what we're about, you know, to take a, to take a truly vintage frame um, well, like you, you, that. You should, you should tell the story how the actual, how we got into the frame because that, like, you know, that's, 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 a, that's a typical Australian, you know, um, motorcycle um you know in what the industry here is about and you know is um you went on ebay and had a look and and you know there's tons and tons of people selling tons and tons of parts mm. and mainly people here hold on to rusty old things yeah. for as long as possible having this illusion that they're one day going to build an, an EW350 um, Douglas motorcycle from 1926 and all what they have is a frame and eventually they go, the wife says, get, get this piece of rusty shit out of my garage. Mm. <laughs> right. And, and, and then there's these two guys, or in this case, Charles is on eBay and sends me a message saying, check this out, check this out, there's a frame. And I'm going, yeah, what, what is it off? A Douglas. And I go, you, we don't know shit about it, Douglas. Oh, like, yeah, I'm already bidding on it. Yeah, okay. W what has it got? Oh, nothing. Just the frame and there's a fork on it and maybe a seat pan that's rusted out. And okay, how much did you pay for it? Oh, 350 I already bought it. It should come next week sometimes. And I go, okay, we just hang it in the garage. We have no idea what we're going to do with it. And, and, and only later it became apparent that um, you know, the value in the frame was actually in the fork. Um, the frame itself wasn't really, um, you know, was in good shape, but it was the mm. fork, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, it was both, really. But we knew we knew we were never going to we were never going to go and start finding all the original Douglas parts. I mean, you know, we both of us would be long dead before we found about four <laughs> right. of them. Um, well, but what, 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 what do we know about? And that's Honda's. So, uh, so we thought, well, fuck, let's put a Honda engine in it and <laughs> get this thing back on the road. Uh, well, it, kind of it, went wasn't, from there. it wasn't really that easy because um, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. What are you talking about? It, it, it's five minutes. It, it sounds no like oh, yeah. <laughs> no. It is, it's basically like the problem that we have here is this: um, we don't have any access to any great array of engines or parts or anything. So you know, 
and everything that came to Australia came predominantly in the 70s and you know maybe the 60s um, but um, most of the parts that came in or most of the motorbikes came in are just basically run into the ground by some people um, and in the end you end up with um, you know like maybe that Douglas bicycle came in here in the 70s or 60s um, was maybe driven into the ground and the guy sold the engine but he hung on to the frame and so we end up with lots of fragments from a uh, lots of things like for example those those two bikes that we bought where the motor came from um, were just a guy that cleaned out his garage and he just had these two bikes laying around and it just happened to be two Honda and you know that there, there were there were two there was one frame wasn't it and and, and two engines and we, we didn't pay a lot of money and that just goes into the garage and was lying in the corner however Charles had the vision of the board tracker from the style of the frame and the problem was finding an engine that needed to fit in between the two rails and the only way that would be happening would be a, is the size of the engine and so there was only there was only really the only option we had was that was that one two five Honda engine which is yeah I mean there was more there was there was more to it than just finding one that fit because it had to work with the aesthetics and yeah. you know there was there was a lot of consideration that kind of went but into that but that project started way way before we, yeah, yeah, before yeah. we actually started yeah. um, it was also then the machine show um, in um, in um, 2019 um, which started in 2018 when we actually had the frame already and then we started to um, basically come up with this idea we entered into the machine show competition again and little did we know that this scale of the of the project was way beyond of our of our skills at the time um and we just needed to develop this all you know mm -hmm. so right okay. yeah. it's a, a gorgeous bike though don that thing is just out of this world amazing <laughs> the, the the metal work on that uh, just to see it is is it's good to see a bike that's completely different, like mm. completely different. Mm. You, you can't put that in the category for me. So, you know, when you, um, when you actually look at the bike, I mean, you know, what, one of the things is that I always try to tell people about it is, um, you know, the design of the tank is the mother of invention. Um, we basically had no idea of how to do any, you know, like tank work or metal work or, you know, um, all what we had is um, an idea of the dimensions of the tank fitting in between there and you know what can we do with with just a bead roller you know like what, what can we do to just roll it into a shape that looks similar to the original tank and you know and basically we just looked at the original tank didn't we mm, just basically yeah. went from there and yeah. and that developed and that's the skill that we're trying to always do is we try to just look at what can we do by improving the skill because basically like people you know when you when, when you name call um you know you look at people like um um sosa christian sosa you know they have years and years of um of metal fabrication skills behind them um you know you look at max um Hazan, Hazan, how do you spell his name how do you say his name you know what as far as max knows it's okay however you want to say it yeah. Hazen. I think it's correctly. I think it's Hazen. Hazen, yeah. Okay. So you know, they, 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 these guys have great metal skills, and they've been doing this for years and years and years. You know, and 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 we're just like a bunch of dudes that basically go and go. <laughs> um, look, we need a tank. Okay, how we do the tank? Oh, it should look like this, but yeah, we can't do this. We can't. We can't roll. We can't roll anything wider than three hundred mils because our bead roller is only yeah. that size. So we just work around that and, and, you know, the next bike will go out. You know, we bought, we bought one of those English wheels that um, Greg always refers to a corn, Cornish wheel or something. <laughs> I don't even know what an English wheel. You, you, you know that in choke anyway. He, he, has a, uh, he has a Sharpie marker that he crossed off English on there. And it, at, at his shop, it says Australian wheel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we bought the does Chinese. He, does, wheel. He, does he mount that one upside down? <laughs> <laughs> he should. <laughs> he should. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, are there any other like um, 
big struggles that come from, I know you said the shipping and everything to get the, the tools and the, and the parts you need to Australia, that must be a, a huge factor that comes into what you're going to build or, or how you're mm. going to go in different directions. Mm. Um, I think the other one for, for us particularly is, is just time. Um, you know, not, not either of us, both of us have full-time jobs. Um, you know, we're doing this on, we're doing this on uh, essentially evenings um, and, you know, one afternoon a week where we kind of get together. And, and so, you know, um, the, the Douglas, the board tracker, that was an eight month build. Um, wow. which, which, you know, it's fairly quick, really if you think about the amount of work in it. Um, and it would be, it'd be amazing to, 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 to have more time to, mm -hmm. to do it. Um, you know, and, and get things out faster. We've got, <clears throat> we've got so many ideas and so many things that we want to achieve. And, you know, we've got this, this, this book of ideas that, that we've got, uh, you know, one day we want to do this and one day we want to do that and we want to try that. And, you know, but time just limits us. Um, um, I, I think we also have a problem with the actual amount of, um, you know, cash that we maybe can put into this, you know, into this project or into a particular project. Um, you know, we, we, we're basically also, um, you know, handicapped by where we are. Um, I think Australia is being so isolated in, in you know, in terms of um, not only the distance that stuff needs to get here. Like, you know, we, we ordered something from four into one and what was that, a week or something, a week and a half or something before we get stuff. Um, so we always have that in mind. but. It, just we've been isolated from the great shows of the world. Um, you know, like we, we, our exposure only comes from two shows, really. One is the machine show, one is the throttle roll. And besides that, um, you, you know, we, we don't have any, we don't have any um, output. We, we, we can't actually show our stuff. So we're really relying only on the, on the Instagram that, you know, most people rely on. Um, and um, you know we're just a little tiny fish in the big in the big mountain. I mean, that was really the only thing when I sent you the message to say, hey, don't in your podcast, don't forget about the little guys because the little guys are trying to get to where the big guys are at. And, uh, uh, you know, and um, and you know, um, I wish we would have a museum like the Haas Museum where there's this machine standing in there that you can go in there and you gawk for hours to find out how um, Max mounted. <laughs> you know his foot packs or something like this we we don't you know we we only see this on a you know on the instagram really you know i, I think we're basically handicapped from that point um right and i i really appreciate you sending me that message because um my uh exposure to the motorcycle world started with you know with craig Rodsmith from your guys home country there and when me and him started hanging out he was doing wonderful stuff and without instagram and things like that i mean mm. no he'd still be in his shop by himself and no one no one would know the fantastic stuff that he's putting out yeah 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 mm. Mm. yeah it was i mean hard, i think hard to get it out there yeah totally yeah and, and i like i'm i'm i i kind of i poo poo social media for all sorts of reasons but i think as a tool for getting getting content out there of, of stuff like that i think it is is amazing um you know even even for us you know, it, to, to it, know to know that you've got you can get stuff out there yeah. easily is is um it's pretty powerful it's pretty cool it's also inspirational really as well so you like i mean you know instagram is that is that um you know two sorted monster that you know you get carried away with people posing with their motorbikes and you get carried away with people pushing their products and trying to sell you something and then there's you know a post um from Craig in there and there's um, you know there's all these people doing fantastic work and you see that as well and it's like this two-sided you know sort of monster where you, you get you get disappointed by seeing you know this this um, guys um, posing on bikes and you at the same time the next picture you flick through is um, you see how this guy is um, shaping a aluminium tank and you follow him and you you can't wait to see another one of his posts and you basically go and eat this stuff up, you know, like, um, you know, um, it's like YouTube really, um, just in a, di in a different format. But, um, right. You know. 
Well, guys, I, I can tell by looking at your Instagram page that I think that anybody that's really into building custom motorcycles, that people that actually follow these pages, we can all tell who the posers are out there and who's the guys that, you know, eat, sleep, breathe, and bleed, you know, doing this just because they love it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty easy to see, actually. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I think so. <laughs> look, look, I show you eight mil screw. We got yeah. a fine thread. Check this out. <laughs> it's it's kind of easy, isn't it? It's it's all entertainment. It's all entertainment. Yeah. Hey, switch switching gears, guys. I I saw that you guys um, sponsored the uh, oil on the bud screen uh, just this past. Mm -hmm. Was it May? Yeah, I don't June. even know. It was yeah. June, May, June, June. June yeah. yeah. Um, it was also um, you know, like um. An impulse, um, like I did with you, is I just basically I listen to this podcast. Um, I listen to Andrew and I listen to Craig on you on your show, and immediately were like, "Oh, we need this. We need to be involved. We we we, um, we in Australia. We need to just basically like you know we we need to do something about the scene." And I've been just you know I've been basically daily on on Instagram and you know scouring through the pages and looking at things and i come across this guy um that made this movie and all what i could find out about it is, is it was about custom motorcycles and you know and i just keep looking at it and looking at it and one day i just go on so has he made the movie or is he making a movie or what's the story and you know i basically follow him and you know i followed the oil in the blood page and he's posting you know and he's he, and then this trailer comes out and immediately in this trail in the trailer of of his movie it packs me straight away my my skin starts to you know i get goosebumps and i go i need to see this movie w w whatever it takes i mean if i have to fly to um somewhere i want to see this movie because there's all these instagram short movies out there and you know people always forget about the essence and it really spoke to me straight away and i said to charles hey check this out and you know charles was exactly in the same thing so i just basically what i did is i just sent the message to um i think it was garrett's instagram yeah. i say hey how do i see the movie how can i get the movie um you know can we see it w what's the story um and he goes oh it's not out here and we're um doing the premieres and we're trying to you know promote it and i said to him oh, look i'm here in australia um how can we help you know you know can we help you you know putting it on or something and at the same time he was talking to um to the pipeburn guys um they actually live just around the corner from us as well it's like kind of um funny and um, but we Very cool. we never really spoken to um any of the pipeburn guys except we spoke to Scott and he had a couple of bikes on on their on their um on their blog but Garris basically brought us and um Andrew from Pipeburn together to basically start to think about it how we're going to get the movie to Australia mm. and it was more like a you know a labor of love to basically go and you know all what I was interested in is I just want to see that damn thing I, I you know <laughs> I want to just see what these people have to say about custom motorcycles and the first time we watched it um Gareth sent us a little link and we watched it because we didn't really know should we promote something that is not 100 percent our our language or we're not seeing and it's the first opening scene that guy talks about it i don't know what his name is he talks about it with his english accent about you know has this jumper on with some some you know writing on it and he's talking about his motorcycle how he fell in love and he's riding it and and then this guy blasts over the fields and you know and, and with his motorcycle and you see the close-up and i knew immediately okay we gotta bring this movie to australia mm. yeah i mean i think yeah the the, the movie is uh it, it's a great movie and if you're if you're into custom bikes but more specifically building custom bikes it definitely definitely talks to you you know all uh it covers <clears throat> it's, a, it's a great movie that covers you know all aspects of not just custom bikes but motorcycles as a whole um and it's shot really well it's edited really well some really good insights from some really amazing people around the world who are in that in that world um and um you know when 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 we got together with andrew we were like this this you know this movie you can't just you can't just project this onto some wall in a pub you know let, let's get this at a let's get this at a cinema um you know let's make a song and dance about it 
I mean, um, I, I found out that the format was actually made for the cinema. Mm. So, you know, so, so I, I knew this can't be just shown anywhere um, else than in the cinema. Mm. So that was really the objective from the beginning. Yeah. So how well re was it received? Really well. Yeah. So we sold out. So we did two premieres. So we did um, Sydney and Melbourne, um, one after the other. So consecutive nights, um, both sold out. Uh, we had a waiting list for tickets as well. Wow. Um, and um, yeah, these were these were in you know these were in two hundred seat. Um, so it was cinema. It was, was pretty big, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah. So, yeah. So Melbourne, I think, was one hundred and eighty seats, and Sydney was two hundred and twenty seats, and yeah, it sold out. But I mean, it, did, it only sold out because Craig was here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, he'll find that very flattering. Don't worry about I'm sure, the sure he won't say that. <laughs> no, that's like, yeah, we so we basically um, we brought um, we brought the boy home. You know what? It was a very emotional time for him too to be back there. So yeah. I know that a, a big thank you from him. Yeah, I mean, I, I it wasn't until he got here that that I kind of realized the magnitude of yeah to him, and he hadn't been back for for years. Yeah, um, and he realized fifteen you know, or something. Yeah, like it was fifteen yeah. years. Yeah. Well, you yeah, know, like so. when you you know you see you see someone famous on Instagram, you automatically assume <laughs> he's just chat setting everywhere, and you know he's buying plane tickets to everywhere, mm. and he has this disposable, um, you know, um, amount of money that he can just do whatever he does. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what Mr. Famous looks to us, you know. Yeah, what I mean? but it's right. like a rock star, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah you he'll know, he'll laugh you know, at you for both of those things, and now now yeah, that you just met him in person, you know he's nothing like that. No, totally not. <laughs> no, no it's, it's actually funny. I mean, you know, I, I'm gonna just say this out. I mean, I don't really care if I'm embarrassing or not, but I picked him up at the airport and, with a know, case of beer. Yeah, I actually, um, <laughs> I, I kind of like saw, you know, there's, a, there's this company that um, is a local beer company and they make this fantastic beer. It's, um, it's Young Henry's and they made this um, special edition beer called Motor Oil. And it has so like cool. a KY in it or something. And yeah. I thought, oh, this is a cool idea. I just bring bring him some beer when I pick him up. But you know, he um he shed a tear when he arrived because he came first to Sydney before he came to Melbourne. And you know, he walked out. It was actually funny because it hasn't had it hadn't rained actually for a long time. And he came and you know, it was kind of like um, you know, the long lost son came home crying, the heaven crying, you know, it was kind of like yeah, it was pretty emotional, I think. Um, and um, sure. and so yeah, so we 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 got the movie into the right setting for um for what it's what it was made of, you know. Um, made a great friend. Um, Garris is a you know is an astonishing um type of guy to actually stick with this idea of bringing this to a wider audience and a very narrow, you know, industry. I mean, you know, it's, it's very small. Um. I mean, Garrett, Garrett's an excellent man. Community yeah. to excellent man. Suck the essence out of it. You know, he really got into the point of what it is about. You know? Right. Andy, did you do, uh, d uh, did I hear this right? Maybe I, correct me if I'm wrong. Did you do a question and answer thing at the, at the premiere? Um, oh yeah, we, um, we had, um, so, I mean, basically the idea was how can we sell tickets to um, a movie that, no one has actually heard of it or heard of it um, you know and um, people have maybe seen the um the trailer um the trailer didn't really you know it gave you a glimpse of what it could be um you know so, so it was kind of hard to try to sell tickets to a movie without um giving people something a little bit extra so um i don't know where the idea came from but um the idea was basically to do a a, um, a q and a um we did the Q&I before the movies because we always figured out that when you do something like this after a movie, it kind of gives away, um, you know, build the anticipation of the movie. So, yeah, we had the, we had Gareth on stage. We had Craig on stage um, in Sydney. Um, we had Andrew on stage and, um, and Charles was there. And we just basically asked all sorts of questions for the audience that came to actually, um, you know, get to know these guys mm. um i think i think we we're kind of doing i think we kind of did this for the people that are into building bikes or appreciating bikes to actually get a um, a one-on-one -on, -one on people um 
to ask you know there was people asking questions about you know bike building and you know where where Craig was from and you know how long did it take to make the movie so yeah um, and I think you guys are an inspiration to this whole the whole reason I do this podcast is for the culture and and seeing guys come together and what you guys talking about and what you did for your community of like-minded people to to bring these guys out there and to share this movie that that you guys love um to bring to people is is very admirable um i think that's awesome for you guys to do hmm, thank you yeah i mean we just we just we just do it because we love it and we enjoy it and we kind yeah. of try and you know if there's something that's not already happening we try and make it happen and you know um i think our scene here is so small in australia of actual mm. actual custom bike builders you know there's a there's a great scene of people um that change things on their motorcycles you know like um you know modify their motorcycles the way they like it you know they take things off and they put something else on and they put new mirrors on we got a great great um you know um community of people doing it but people really building bikes from scratch or you know going the whole full thing of you know thinking about it from a design or from an art aspect um i think you know in, in america there's probably more people doing that than we have here so we, we kind of need to promote this a little bit more to people what's what's happening there you know okay so two two unlikely guys to meet each other um and and have this passion of motorcycles bring you guys together and to actually succeed to to do something you love um from each one of you can you both give uh maybe some of our listeners a little um advice on if they're getting started or they're struggling uh, on how to keep moving forward um i think one is um if you're struggling to kind of make a start just just start um you know don't be afraid just to just to kind of get get going um but i think i think you know re reach out to reach out to people um you know we um we 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 talk to a lot of people and get a lot of insights and in, as as to to how to's you know how how can we do this and how can we do that better and um people are always very willing to actually give give kind of insights because you, you sort of think you sort of think oh you know this person is specializes in this they they're not going to want to give away their secrets but actually people enjoy talking about what they're passionate about and what they, they do. love doing um and uh you know i i certainly learned that um just to sort of ask and and, and yeah and just sort of meet people and you know you'll get you'll get insights and you'll learn stuff from them but also it'll it'll um inspire you to 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 actually get on with it and and do it because it's not an easy thing and we all need to stick together in that yeah, yeah. um I, i think um you know if you if you want to if you want to start out to become a um you know custom motorbike builder if that's what your ambition is um you know fo follow the people that do the stuff and they do the stuff um you know from scratch um i i i kind of have that hunger for um learning stuff um like i i'm i don't know i'm i'm not so interested in for example the welding aspect which is what charles does is i'm i'm more interested in the aspect of the old arts and the old traditions of things that get missing where people go out and they outsource this like you know I, i i like to saw i like to make things on a sewing machine um I, i like to learn how to um do wheel lacing um you know like as an example with the last two builds we outsourced the wheel lacing which was you know it was hurting my heart that we needed to do this because um you know it's something i want to do myself so you know for people starting out um look at the skill that you have and look at the skill that you want to have and see how you got to get there and there's tons and tons of hours and hours of youtube videos out there of dudes showing you how to do this stuff so i i think um rather than flicking on the instagram and seeing people posing on bikes just look at youtube videos how someone is um you know lacing wheels or you know um placing a spark plug or understanding how a spark plug work just just try to work towards um expanding your skill you know um and then also talk talk to people that are like minded get like minded people you know get a mate that you do stuff together you know like for me 
the only way how I gotten to where we now are is because I have Charles and if I wouldn't have Charles, I would have probably, you know, probably would have given up and done something else, you know, because right. it's very easy to give up and and, mm -hmm. and pushing forward and, and learning that it's okay to make mistakes because that's the that's the thing that actually moves you forward sometimes you learn yeah, more exactly. from that than anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So guys, I, I know that uh, we have a we have a ton to talk about, but I want you guys to think about this right now. Um, from guys that you've heard on the show um, and other things, I would like you guys to help me nominate two to three different people that you'd like to that you'd like to hear, whether they're friend. They're, nobody's too high and nobody's too low. So <laughs> anybody that you'd like to find that you'd think would be really interesting to have. All right. Well, well we, we we talked about this for quite a while, didn't we? Oh, good. Yeah. We made um we made a little list. And, yeah. Um, we, we because this is the common theme that goes through your show is that is that people nominating um you know other people. I mean, um I'm not gonna nominate Craig because he was already on and I'm, yeah we don't want to hear anything else about him no, anyway. Yeah, no, I, I, I think, forget him. I think there's there's um there's all all the usual suspects are all um you know um so um. Basically, um, we have what five people on there, so you know, we okay, we'll, we'll, leave, it, we'll leave it to we, two or three. We, we, well, we are duo, so you can do a few, and I do a few, <laughs> yeah. and then, yeah. and then, sure. and then Dave, and Dave, Dave can just go and edit, um, edit and it see, out or, uh, and see what, what he can come up with. Yeah. No, there's so I mean, many, there's first, so many deserving people out there that deserve recognition, so the, the more well, the merrier, yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, I'll, I'll go first with one, um, who is another Aussie, or I should say, an Aussie because we're not actually Aussie, but an Aussie, <laughs> yeah. uh, just continue that theme. Uh, and that's Matt Darwan, um, or Matt Machine, um, the Machine Files. Uh, so as well as, as, well as um, running uh, the Machine Files for many, many years, which was around custom culture, um, and also putting on the Machine Show, uh, he's also an a, a incredible um, custom bike builder. Um, he's an architect as well. He's an really? architect by trade. Yeah. Um, so he's a he's a but 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 you know he's also um, uh, he's he's one of those he's one of those characters where um, everything everything kind of link, links back to to Matt. Um, so you know everyone cool. everyone sort of got a link to him somewhere. He's one of those sort of um, hub type people where where um, he, he was invited to Born Free a couple of times, I think. So Excellent. Seen, so he built a couple of bikes to send over to America. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. So he'd, he'd wow. be one. Yeah. Um, I I got I gotta have to nominate <laughs> even I don't really know him, but it's at the moment probably one of the people that I aspire quite a lot to, and where the next skill that we need for progressing of what we're doing is. Um, is a guy by the name of Evan Wilcox. Um, he's, um, I don't really know too much about him, but he has this fantastic um, Instagram um, page where he shows you how to do this stuff. And he, t he sometimes talks and he sometimes not talks and it's um, low budget. He puts the phone somewhere there and he goes on his planishing hammer and he does all this amazing stuff. And, you know, he has the knowledge of most of the people want to have and he gives it away for free and he shows you and he, he welds aluminum old school with a torch and with flux and you know it's so inspiring this whole thing that I went out and I bought a blowtorch um, we, we don't really need one need a blowtorch but I just bought it because I thought or oh, Evan has one, or maybe I should do this. In the meanwhile, Charles started to weld aluminium with the tick, so we don't really need the gas right. um, welding thing, but it's just an inspiring. So we'll, also, uh, we'll have Evan PayPal you some money for the blowtorch yeah. fee. <laughs> <laughs> he's, yeah. uh, but he's an amazing craftsman, and um, yeah. he's he's been into bikes for for, for many, many, many years. Um, I mean, I guess the work he's doing now. So he 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 does he does work for. Um, for people, so they come to him and to, to recreate um, motorcycle tanks or it's, it's mainly or, old stuff, isn't it? It's all, copies, yeah, yeah. So he, he recreates, yeah, yeah. yeah, so he recreates, um, very cool. But I'm, I'm 
sure he's done ground up. Uh, if, you, if you look him up, you will find there's probably stuff that's maybe in the Haas Museum where he made a tank for it or something. I wouldn't, <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if he made, uh, you know, there's a Vincent bike that he was working on for quite a while. So, yeah, um, that's one to nominate. Very um, cool. Um, the, the other one, and again, we don't know them. Um, it's okay. These, Just these who you'd like are, to hear from. Yeah, yeah. These yeah. guys out of Japan. Um, they go by the name Heiwa. Um, so Heiwa motorcycles. It, it, it's like almost like a, you you see the Instagram and you just want to go, okay, like like what? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What, what's <laughs> this? This is fa- this is this is so good. And you, I just look at it for hours. You know, if I could like a picture or a motorcycle of them, and I would have the option of giving them a hundred likes in one go, I probably would <laughs> give them a hundred likes. So it's pretty pretty yeah. inspirational. Yeah. And that's. It. H A W A? H E I. H E I. W A. W A. There he is. So these guys are, 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 again, amazing craftspeople putting out, you know, incredible bikes that tend to kind of blur the lines between the style, the style and the genre. And that's, you know, I certainly like that. It's kind of, you know, there's, Chopper essence is in there. There's cafe races, and then there's stuff that's just completely unique to them as well. Um, so I love, love that. They, yeah, they, they definitely have a bit of a fingerprint on their on their stuff, but just just excellent work. I, I think they come out of this um, whole um, breath style movement. You know, mm-hmm. breath, breath style. Um, um, so you know that that that's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Very cool. And then th- that that's kind of like the you know the hands on the builders um the inspiration you no know, tm things and and then the other one is the the bike riding uh, guys and you know as much as we like motorcycles building i mean you know I, I i like to ride my bike as often as possible but i'm really um kind of like i'm looking always out for these people that can go and race bikes and you know i'm that you know you had that um um, larry from new york motorcycles on yeah yeah larry morris he was talking about racing um you know bikes and vintage bikes and you know we have this fantastic group of people that basically um in the argument is out if um flat tracking was actually invented in australia but um they would probably tell you it is um so it's a group by then they called the churkles and the Churkles are a bunch of, um, you know, fanatic um, dirt bike riding, flat tracking people that just go around in circles. And, you know, their, their enthusiasm about motorcycles is, is very addictive. So, you know, like I'm, I'm not the guy that would go on a dirt bike, but I would certainly after watching these guys buy one. Um, right. There's two people. There's two particular guys um, in the in that group, and um, one of them is Andy Baker. He's like, um, I call him like he's the. Um, you no, know, we had the king of cool. Um, we had, um, <laughs> um, yeah, you, you know what I mean. Um, I, know what I, you I mean. Refer, refer to him as a, as the prince of cool. Um, he's kind <laughs> of like my version of. Um, of someone I look up to um, what he does with motorcycles and the way he goes about it. He takes fo- great photos and he's an all around good dude. And so him and a guy by the name of Scruff um, and Scruff is a guy that um, races bikes and he would drive for days in Australia for days to get to a place to ride his vintage um, Yamaha around a dirt track for hours and hours and then drive back for two hours and two days and and he he recently was in a movie called um is think the think desert race so you know if if, if you into um off-road riding and you want to find out about how extreme sports goes um the think um the think a movie that's currently um out and around um gives you a great snapshot of how crazy these guys are so, you know, wow yeah. Well, thank you, because those are some excellent, and you guys are all over the place. I like that you guys, <laughs> like, yeah. you have a whole rounded uh, thing. You need to get off Instagram and start working on a bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've got some yeah. stuff to finish. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Okay, so how, how do we get you guys to get a bike over here to the States so I can meet you guys in person at one of these shows? I, it, actually, interesting, because, um, you know, was also one of my Instagram, um, you know, um, 
shout outs that I did is I, um, there was um, Mama Tribe made a, made a call out for bikes in to be invited and they say submit a bike and I said to Charles let's submit a bike and he goes how are we gonna get there I said well let's worry about if they pick us and we just entered and we forgotten about it and we got an email I don't know what the, the guy do you remember his name uh know. Warren and, Warren or Scott yeah that's why yeah. Warren Warren and he sent an email and says oh great bike we love to have you okay um see you at the show and we go okay how do we get the bike there and that's basically what we, we don't have any we don't have any financial um you know um help really to get a bike there the, the costs involved of doing this for us um you know um i i think um you know we we could probably build one or two bikes instead so so in the end we didn't go to mama tried um even we had the opportunity to just um, throw a bit of light of what we do uh, um, in 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 America. Um, right. So um, you know, the, um, uh, my plan is to come to the hand build show um, in in April. Rumor has it we might be roommates. <laughs> oh, so yeah, uh, is isn't Craig said he's renting a big house or something? Yeah. Yes. So I gotta actually talk to him about it because I think he snores. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I, yeah. I, I want to have a floor plan first. <laughs> well, me and him will snuggle <laughs> together. You can have your own room. That's I'm, fine. I'm, I'm, I'm certainly going to be there. Um, I, I'm trying to put a bike into the hand luggage, but I think that's not going to work out. Just take it and put it in pieces. You can put it back together when you get there. You'll have help. There'll be enough guys there. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank yeah, you guys. We would definitely love to come. Before. Yeah, anytime you guys ever come here, you can make sure to look us both up, and and we'll take very good care of you over here in the states. That's for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, and I'm planning on making a trip out there, and I will definitely come see you guys. That's for that's oh, for sure. sure. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. guys, I'm I'm sorry about you know time wise. I mean, we could talk for hours together. So I uh, I want to thank you both for taking the time this afternoon. Well, your afternoon or morning, something there. Lunch, Seven lunch, lunchtime. Yeah, yeah. yeah, lunchtime tomorrow. So I'm glad I got to talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> but, uh, from the future. <laughs> that's right. We're talking to these guys from the future. So um, I'll give you a heads up when we post it, but I really appreciate your guys' time. And just guys, keep up the great work. You guys are an inspiration to everybody out there doing stuff. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, and, All right. and you, keep, you keep your podcast up as well. Yeah. Whew. I'm trying, brother. A lot, a lot of hours. I can put the kids to bed and run up and do all kinds of stuff. So we're going to keep it rocking. Guys like you make me keep doing it. Let's put it that way. Awesome. No. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And uh, cheers to you both. Cheers. Bye. All right. Bye.